You know, there are great men in America. Some are dead. Some are remembered. Welcome to the edge. We'll talk a little bit about them, not enough. I'm not in depth. Uh, I don't have the in-depth knowledge about the man I'm about to talk about. But a number of men today are talking about doing the same thing, giving back at the end of their lives to their great country. A man at the end, in the late 1900s, excuse me, the early 1900s, I beg your pardon, Andrew Carnegie, who was a steel magnet, and he was worth, in those days, billions, when billions was trillions and so forth. So his steel industry ruled everything. And he was at a cocktail party in Manhattan one time. He was always complaining about the people complaining. His steel mills belched black smoke. His people came out of the out of the furnaces and the and the castings and all of the things they did in, in the in the steel manufacture of of, of the product steel, uh, looking like coal miners. It was very filthy, very unhealthy. So he got a lot of criticism. And at this cocktail party, he was complaining about all the criticism, whether it was Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or the Washington Post, which were probably different papers at that time. And he was also caricatured by Charles Nast, the great cartoonist for the New York, uh, I think New York Post at that time. Great, great cartoonist, Charles Nast. Anyway, so he's bitching about this at this cocktail party. So somebody says, well, why don't you do something for your country? He, he kind of erupted in anger. What do you mean? I love my country. Oh, really? You love it? Then why don't you do something for it? Like what? Like what? And they said, well, what's the problem with the workers you have? They're ignorant. They're fucking ignorant. I'm sorry I used that language. It's all right, Andrew Carnegie. You're, you have the money. You can get by with it. Oh, well, they're ignorant. So why don't you do something about their ignorance? What would you do? Well, if I had your kind of money, I'd build a, a library system for the, for, each, for the different countries. You mean like the United States and Canada? How about Mexico? Why don't you do it all? So all of North America has a library system thanks to you. So that every young person could go to a library and learn about their own ignorance that you complain about, that you bitch about, that you curse about. And he said, you know what? Instead of worrying about running my businesses the way they currently run, I'm going to sell a lot of my business and the money is going to go to exactly that, a library system to, to beat all library systems so we don't have to look up to Europe for all the intelligent people working for their, having their poor people become educated and people by their own bootstraps coming up because of my library system. So I am definitely going to do that. And that is exactly what he did. That's what you could, every time you go to a library in the United States, you must thank Andrew Carnegie. You must do that. So you had a brother, and he wrote uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. And so you have very, very good people, great people with a memory that's good for them, their legacy. They don't have to write down, I gave this, and I don't have to put a name on a building. I actually provide an entire system for, the old, for all the people, old and young, and the library system is it. What, why you find hopeless people in libraries today, what do you find? The real heart of the poor is in our library system who are becoming, becoming enriched by the education they get at no particular cost. I want, to, I want to thank you for listening to this little diatribe about a great American, but that is a great American. Warren Buffett is one who also said, tax me, it's about money, it's about our country. It's not about money. It's about our country. And that's what Andrew Carnegie was about. He's about his country and his people. So you, you, we all owe him a great debt. That's all there is to it. And I owe you a great debt for watching me and putting up with my opinions. Thank you for watching. And thank you for watching The Edge because we're, all, we're always at the edge of something in life. There's always a, something around the corner or something over the cliff. So avoid the cliff if we can, but always come to the edge to know where you, where you are and where you stand. Thank you for coming to the edge.